Great, yes, thank you. So, my name's uh, Joe Ryan, I'm from the Church Room Patrons Board, and I'm going to talk to you about thinking about your pension early, but not just also your pension, about housing, uh, your, your housing situation as well. So, when I think about retirement, I like to think of it as a bit of a journey between the hustle and bustle of working life in a city towards something a bit more exotic and relaxing, like a beach in Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, and getting from the city to the beach in Hawaii uh, can be a journey. And thinking about your pension and housing early uh, can make that journey a lot smoother. I uh, apologise if anybody gets a bit of sea sickness whilst they go through these slides because they do sort of whiz around. But we never seem to think about our pension early. And here are some statistics. Um, only 31% of us in our 40s wish, uh, 31% of us in our 40s wish they'd started things sooner. And by that, I think they mean looking at their pension early, looking at their housing situation early, and planning for what they would like to do when they reach retirement. And again, in the bottom right there, 26% of us in our 40s expect to work long into traditional retirement age. And that's quite, that's quite a low statistic. And even worse, quite a sad one, 16% of us in our 50s look forward to retirement. Now, if you're a, a half a uh, glass half full type of person, you might think that people love their work so much that they never want to give it up. But if you're a, half, a glass half empty type of person, mm. it could well mean that they probably don't know what their retirement is going to look like and whether they can afford it. Mm. And that kind of backs up the last statistic I have here, where 43% of us in our 60s, that's less than half of us, believe that we'll be comfortable in retirement. And by like that, I assume that people think that they just can't either afford the retirement that they would like. So thinking early about your pension could move you away from this all sort of doom and gloom situation to something a bit more like this. So when people actually do get to retirement, they seem to really like it. Boredom isn't a problem. I've had three boring days in two years. So suddenly people think that I might sit around all day in retirement. That's clearly not the case. Uh, I spend a lot more time with my family and that's the most rewarding part. I think we all know that that's a key part of retirement as well. This is my favourite one. I'm glad I planned early. Retirement is like a long holiday, and I'd hate to run out of money on holiday. I think we all know what that might feel like. And very philosophical, this last one. When you get something right, everything flows from it. It's like a little bullseye, but only if you hit it. But how do you hit it? So we've got five points here that I think that you could start thinking about from today. So first of all, the top three here are things that you can do starting from now to start thinking about yourself and start thinking about retirement. So first of all, roughly, you don't need to know the exact date or the exact year, but have a ballpark idea of when you might want to retire and how long have you got until that ballpark time. Then. What do you want to do when you retire? Is there a round the world trip that you've always fancied going on? Or is there that dream car or house that you've always fancied that you'd like to buy? And how much money will you need to fund all of that? And finally, don't underestimate how long you're likely to live for. Clergy are right up the top end of the scale of people who live the longest. Read into that what you will. Uh, and do you have any health problems? Are you expecting any problems with your long-term health? And will you need money put aside for any healthcare when you're older. So those are the top three things that we as the Pensions Board can't help you with, they're decisions for you to make, but at the bottom here are two decisions that I think that we can help you with, so how can you plan ahead and we'll look at what we can help you do to start thinking about your pension now. And also keep an eye on your pensions and whether you feel that's enough and if there's not, if that's not enough for you then we can help you plug the gap. So, first of all, how can you plan ahead? We send you every year, and you might not recognise these statements, but I have got an envelope for everybody, bar three people over there, so please do grab that on the coffee break, of your annual benefit statement that we send you in the summer each year. And it looks something like this, and the key part of your benefit statement is the bottom right bit where it says your projected pension. It changes every year as you work more and more, and the national minimum stipend changes. So keep an eye on that bottom part there, and it will tell you what your expected pension and lump sum is that you will receive automatically 
from the painter's board when you return. So whilst you get these statements every year, keep a track of it, store them away, make sure you, you, you read and understand it. And whilst you're at it, do you have any other pensions from previous employment or anything else that you've got lying around? Why not obtain a statement from those guys as well? And don't forget your state pension, find out what that's likely to be, put it all together, and it will give you a good idea of what your pension in retirement is likely to be. And then, whilst you're at it, why not get ambitious and think about what you would like to do in retirement and how much that might cost. And spending a few hours, just once a year, will go a long way to realising whether you can afford that dream or not. And if you think that you're looking a bit short, there's something we can do to help. So, it's what we like to call plugging the gap. So if there is a gap between what you think you might have in retirement and what you would like, then there's something you can do, which we call additional voluntary contributions. And this ties in quite nicely with Bruce's slides here. Starting early, yeah, key to this, starting early really can help. So ABCs are quite a tax efficient way of saving extra for your retirement to try and get more from your pension uh, to fund the lifestyle that you would like. And using, again, using Bruce's example of £100 a month, uh, if you paid this from your stipend, you will receive a 20% tax relief, so only £80 will come from your pay, but £100 will go into your ABCs. Uh, and if you started at age 50, that £80 over from age 50 to 68 would cost you just over £17,000, but with a 5% return, so in between uh, Bruce's figures, it could look at something about £40,000. If you started much earlier, as you'll see, the, cost is, it, you know, the, the benefit of the cost to what you'll get at the end is far, far higher. So I can't really stress enough about paying more now if you can. Now, as we touched on before, £100 might seem quite a lot, but you could start paying ABCs now for as little as £10 a month. So why not start with £10 a month? And you can, you can increase that, you can stop that, uh, or you can you know, suspend it for a while, whenever you fancy. So if you wanted to start low and increase later on, or if you're feeling ambitious and want to start high and reduce that later on, you're absolutely more than welcome to. Now I've got a little a zoom into here uh, about ways that you think that you might be able to actually save a little bit more to be able to put away for your retirement. I quite like the very bottom one here, if you take a packed lunch to work for 30 years, you might save 60,000 pounds. <laughs> Not so sure. But something, something like uh, other things like saving uh, on mobile phones and just uh, slight tweaks to certain parts of your lifestyle might help you save that little bit extra, that 10 pounds a, a month or, or 20 pounds a month, just to put away towards your pension. And as Bruce said, your young you probably really, really, really will appreciate it want to get much closer to retirement. Now this all sounds great, but of course, it's not always so simple. There are a lot of other things going on in your lifetime. So once you pay ABCs, like I say, you can stop it, but you can't get the money back until you retire. So do only pay this at a time when it suits you. Like I say, you can stop it for a while and start again later. So if you're saving for uh, any sort of housing, then think about that, or paying off any loans, or any other big expenses coming up on the horizon, uh, especially surrounding children, then um, think about that. And if you have any spare money in between all of these situations, then you can send us a check as well. If you come across some, some sort of uh, larger amount than your £100 a month, you're more than welcome to send us a check, which you will receive tax relief on by, by the government if you submit a self-assessment tax return. Um, so you're more than welcome to do that on one-off payments instead of monthly for your stipend. So it is a bit of a balancing act, but it really can be an excellent way to save more. Now this all sounds great, but what can you do with it at the end? Well, the chances are you pay ABCs tax-free into your pension pot, which is separate to your clergy benefits, so it is a side pot in addition to what you receive automatically. And the chances are we could probably pay this back to you, the vast majority of it back to you tax-free as well. So all around, you're not paying any tax. Sounds great, sounds like a loophole, but it is true. And two people in this room already do it. Uh, so using the example of somebody who has about £40,000 and started at 50, 
uh, if they're looking at the higher end of the clergy pension here, we can certainly pay all of that back to them with a bit of wiggle room, tax-free. So paying something, if you have that extra bit of money, just ABC is just one way, and I'm sure Richard and his guys will, will, will look at other ways that you can save. But it could be a way with us, through the Church of England, to put more away for your retirement. If you happen to go over the tax-free limit, that's okay. We can pay the rest to you as a tax lump sum. Or you can do something more exciting, which, which I'm sure we'll tell you about, such as transferring your ABC somewhere else and doing something a bit more racy. Now, you do have the option to pick how your uh, ABCs are invested. So when Bruce was talking about putting it more into equities or something a bit more ambitious, you certainly can do that. Or if you'd rather look at something a bit safer, which might be more of interest to somebody who's a bit closer to retirement, you can do that too. In your packs that I've printed for everybody, there's a copy of an ABC form if you'd like to go ahead and start looking at something like this. Certainly fill that out and give it to me today if you'd like and I'll take it back or we'll drop us an email and send that back to us or post it to us another time. Uh, and again, there's a copy of your benefit statement if you'd like to ask any sort of questions or figures around that. So whilst this all might seem too good to be true, uh, here's how you can talk to us. So the picture, us at the Pictures Board, me and the other people who work there, we're all here to help. Um, please do keep us in our jobs because we are here mainly for you. Um, if you would like a bit of guidance, and this is more of a poke in the right direction, uh, there's plenty of free places where you can talk to people. Um, Pensions Wise Money Advice Service and the Pensions Advisory Service are all great places and very knowledgeable people where you can ask various questions and they will give you a rough guide of what they think you might be able to do. If you want much more tailored advice, uh, then you can find a financial advisor in your area or website below, or certainly speak to Richard and Daryl here, and they'll certainly the right people who give you um, the sort of advice that you need. So that's kind of it for, for pensions, although we can come back to anything. But one last bit about housing. Again, housing is something that we really, really encourage you to think about early. Uh, we have two different types of, uh, of ways that we can help you. If you have some sort of capital uh, and you can't quite afford to buy your own home, then we'll, make, we'll buy the rest of it for you. And you pay uh, rent on the part that we buy for you. Or we have what we like to call in our office church move instead of right move, uh, where we have a, a quite a vast property bulletin and you can pick properties from there to rent from us for as long as you need it. It could be for the rest of your life or it could just be for a couple of years. It's entirely up to you. Now I can't stress enough how important it is to contact us early to make sure you, we can help you get the property that you want. We will help you for up to, as much up to five years before your retirement date. And if you drop us an email or give us a call, and I'll give you the contact details in a second, uh, somebody will, will be your designated housing officer and will come and meet you in person, either at your home or at your place of work or at a train station, or you're more than welcome to drop into our offices as well. Uh, and we will meet you, assess what you exactly what it is, what you would like and what you would need, and we'll go out and find that place for you. So please do contact us early, don't leave it till the last minute, otherwise we might be in a bit of a panic. So, if any of this sounds exciting or interesting, uh, please do give us a call. Um, the pensions contact details are at the top there, and the housing e email address and telephone numbers are at the bottom. Uh, I will certainly give you the slides here to make sure you can get in touch with us. So, that's a kind of a whistle stop tour of everything that I wanted to talk about. So, just to re recap, I hope that you start thinking about this early to try and make the journey as smooth as possible and you do end up somewhere more like this <laughs> than not.